in there, Lead. Got a bad stretch of Indian country to be starting at night. That isn't what's worrying me. We've traveled at night before. This must be something else. It's a sin and a shame, darling, keeping you sitting here waiting like this for hours in your condition. Oh, I don't mind, Abby. This is the frontier, and I knew just what I was getting into. Well, just the same. I don't like it, and <gasps> there he is again. Oh, that evil little man, the one that's always staring at us. Tell him right down there, my man. <coughs> have you changed for five dollars? I sure have. Uh, would you let me have two till I come back through this way? Well, he looks perfectly armless to me, Abby. Uh, don't be fooled by appearances, Miguel. Fortunate it is, out here in the frontier, that I have the gift of seeing. Elsewise, we'd never know the evil from the good. Oh, uh, something troubling you ladies? Perhaps I could be of some assistance? No, Reverend. It's just Abby. She feels she has second sight, and it's telling her everything is evil. Well, oh, just... Oh, yes, there is evil everywhere, ladies, but only for those who seek it. Just the same, I don't like it. There's dark things ahead for us traveling on this train. I feel it. Else why do they keep us here waiting all day? Well, Miss Clayton, since uh, we've been traveling together, I, uh... Well, this is pretty rough country out here, you know, and I've been wondering why someone in uh, your circumstances would come way out here. To be married. Married? Well, I know what you must think, Reverend, but, well, our families have always wanted it. He's Lieutenant Gary Landry, United States Captain. Oh. You see, Reverend, the doctors all say there's nothing wrong with her legs. The reason that she can't walk is up here. Abby, you know that's not true. You know how I've tried to walk since the fall, for Gary's sake as well as mine. Uh, what was this fall? Well, I was thrown from a horse. When he woke, I found my legs were paralyzed. Uh, truly a calamity. But if we hold on to our faith, I'm sure that everything will turn out quite all right. I got a hunch we'll be moving soon. It's about time. Look, Marie, hon. This is just about your last chance to turn back. Are you sure you want to go through with this? What makes you think I'd all of a sudden change my mind? Well, a, a frontier gambling hall ain't nothing like no drawing room back east. You ain't seen them. Believe me, I know. Now look, Bill, the mother act doesn't suit you at all. Let's drop it, huh? Just as you say, huh? How do you do? Who's the new passenger? Uh, conductor said there was a young doctor coming on board. Guess that's him. Oh, If you dear. ladies would permit me, I'm Dr. Willoughby. I'd be very happy to assist the young lady aboard, and you can leave the chair with the baggage crate. Oh, thank you, doctor. Why couldn't I have broken a leg or something? You keep your legs the way they are. Chances will be a lot better. I uh, beg your pardon, uh, you're Miss Fay? Yeah. I understand you intend to take this young girl to Tombstone and put her to work in a gambling hall. I don't see that it's any of your business. I intend to make it my business. Well, how do you like that? If that's the way things are going to be, why would they send us through at all? It's taking a terrible chance. I don't know. I just take orders like everyone else. But with no extra guards and those women aboard, I tell you, I don't like it. I guess it's a deadline. They haven't any other choice. Well, we haven't received a confirmation yet. Maybe they'll still... Order stand. Proceed immediately. What do you think of that? 
I think it's pretty clear. Better get moving. Well, up to now, I've always liked railroading. But this... Uh... Hey, George. Drop these at Tombstone, will you? Sure. Not to put that away. What's in it? Rifles and ammunition. It's gonna be that kind of a trip, eh? Yeah. You'd better grab one, plenty of shells, and keep them handy. Better let me have one to take up to the engineer. Okay. Hey. Keep your eyes open. Oh, yeah. Come here. You know what it means if we don't get this through? I sure do. Keep her rolling, Tim, no matter what. Be ready for anything. Everybody aboard! Bye, honey. Something wrong, ladies? What do you mean, letting an evil little man like that ride with decent women? Well, if he's been annoying you, ladies, I... Wait a minute, I'm not annoying anybody. Oh, no? Take a look in that suitcase. There you are. Our FOB model, 395. Hey, just what is your line, mister? My line happens to be women's lines. Get it? Women's I lines. I do believe the man's proud of the demonstration. I certainly am, and furthermore, madam, I'd like you to know I'm sent out by the Daily Waste Corsa Company of St. Louis, Missouri, not to give away, not to sell, but to advertise this delicious product. Now, if your wife is the kind of a woman that won't give the goldfish fresh water because they didn't drink what they had yesterday, she's kind of cheap. Is that right, Ben? That's why I'm selling these courses. My card, Clinton Gulliver, Corsa Timmy. I've been watching you, ladies. Here you are, madam. <laughs> Nothing. Dr. Willoughby, I've seen you. <clears throat> <coughs> well, I guess you're all right. But right now, I'm not interested. Oh, I'll probably get you on the way back. From where I'm standing, this is new territory. Conductor? What? How far'd you be if I didn't call you? Say, I thought that was a snappy one, didn't I? Get over that one. Give me a call for nine o'clock, please. <laughs> two federal marshals aboard, but I don't mind saying I'm glad to have you. You're expecting trouble, then? Real trouble. 
They wouldn't have delayed this train all day if we weren't. Think you'll have better luck traveling at night? No, but if there's going to be trouble, I'd rather see it coming. I wonder why we were so long getting started. I heard the conductor said it was a break in the telegraph. Well, that can't be true. I heard the telegraph going in the station almost every second while we were waiting. Oh, I uh, beg your pardon, Miss... Uh, Miss... Clayton, Doris Clayton. Oh, Miss Clayton, being a doctor, if there's anything I can do for your comfort. Well, thank you very much, doctor, but I'm doing quite well. You live in Arizona, doctor. No, uh, no, as a matter of fact, this is my first trip west. You see, I've just finished my internship and I plan on starting a practice in Tombstone. Well, if you're any good at plugging knife wounds and uh, bullet holes, Doc, you ought to do all right. My new place alone, once I get it open, ought to keep you with coffee and cake. Coffee and cake? I'll have tea, toast, duck, eggs, and bluefish. <coughs> Speaking of fish, did you ever see a picture of my brother standing in front of a saloon? I say the saloon, but where's your brother? Has he gone in that saloon again? Well, I declare. They'll hit us before dark. I don't know. All I know is this train has to get through. Well, maybe the delay will give the cavalry time to send out a patrol. I hope so. There's a lot of territory to cover. condition. <laughs> Helps me sometimes. <laughs> Stray shots. Look, I'm only here, me darling. But Dad, oh, I'm sure I'd not be taking the chances you would. No passengers on the back platform. <laughs> Everybody, I'll handle this. Just what is this all about? Private matter. But do you realize you're endangering all of my passengers? I'm sorry, I can't help it. I want to buy a ticket to Tombstone. What? I want to buy a ticket to Tombstone. Well, you just shot a man out of his saddle. How do you know I shot him? We saw him get up. Well, I'll sell you a ticket when we check with the law. Now I'll take those guns. What for? Passengers aren't allowed to wear them. Oh, what's your name? Glenn Howard. If you have any trouble, conductor, just let me know. Doctor, that one-sixth of the entire female population have never been approached by any company. Is that so? Which ones? The Indians. Now, you see, I had an artist make up these sketches, especially for the Redskin trade. Now, the way I look at this thing, if I can sell, well, three or maybe even four tribes a year, do you realize what I can make in round figures? Round figures? And of course, pretty good, huh? I, uh, I beg your pardon, uh, Mr. Howard. You're not sleeping, are you? 
No, just thinking. On a misspent life, I hope. <laughs> Pardon how you look at it. There's only one way to look at a life of crime, Mr. Howard. It's, it's evil. I'm afraid things like that are not as simple on the frontier, Reverend... Uh... Uh, Greeley, Jared Greeley. Well, Reverend Greeley, sometimes we do something that everybody thinks is bad. But in the long run, they find out it's the only thing we could have done. I'm afraid I don't follow that. I think the church says something about God helps those that helps themselves. That's right. Well, out here, it's pretty much of a problem to staying alive long enough to have God give you a lift. I'll pray for you, Mr. Howard. Abby. Abby. What, Gail? I've uh, never seen an outlaw before, but this one doesn't look like a desperate character. Appearances are often deceiving me, Gail. But the spirits never lie. Well, what do the spirits tell you about him? They tell me some people are not what they seem. You mean he isn't an outlaw? Them that has eyes, let them see. But uh, the spirits were wrong about the evil little man. I'm not so sure about that. I still say he has the evil eye. to open the place. Oh, two or three weeks. I have to find somebody to back me first and then slap a couple of coats of paint on the place. Uh, the girls will come as soon as I send them word. And we're in business. Uh, uh, pardon me, Miss Fay. I uh, understand you're uh, Well, you're going to open a place in Tombstone. That's right. Uh, you're going to have lots of girls? Five or six, maybe more. Uh, why don't you make it more? What you getting so excited about? Well, you know, more girls, more customers. <laughs> we don't have to worry none about customers. Oh, I, I'm not worried about your customers. I, I, I mean mine. Yours? Yeah, my, my, you know, uh, more girls, more customers. You see, I, I, I like the first chance that you and the, the other girls to sort of put you in shape. Chance for what? Well, uh, like I said, uh, to put you in shape. You remember me, Clinton Gulliver? Corsets? The passes out and... Wait a minute, Miss Faye. Let me show you my merchant berries. Bell. Now, I want you to feel that. You, you feel that material there. It, 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 you see, um, these are guarantee. Our uh, ties tie, our uh, snap snap. Why, you can. Here, try it on. Oh, no. I want to see how it looks. You try it on. You want to try it on? You want to try it on either. Well, anything for sale, I, I haven't had one of these on in a decade. That's 10 years. <laughs> well, you know, the first thing you do, this very simple maneuver, it takes you three, four hours to get into this. You hook it. I know, I think you, this is, Cut on the bias. This is the latest thing out of Cradle, Missouri. Well, these, I don't know exactly, but you notice the contour, it, how it holds you when you, when you walk, you, you just uh, sort of bounce. It's a, it's a bouncy, uh, I don't know what these are for, probably slingshots or something, but uh, that'll give you a rough idea. Where did uh, Miss Abby go? He didn't fall off. Ah, the spirits be with us this night. Hello. 
Hello. Mr. Howard, won't you please sit down? What about your aunt? Oh, I'm sure Abby won't object. See, Abby says the spirits approve of you. And spirits are never wrong, Mr. Howard. Well, in that case. Have you ever been to Tombstone? Mm-hmm. What's it like? I, I've heard so many stories. Well, it's pretty wild and rugged. I suppose most of the stories you've heard are true. You're going there for a visit? No, no, to be married. I'm going to marry a cavalry officer, Lieutenant Gary Landon. Gary Landon? Yes. Do you know him? <laughs> no, I... So you're going to be married? Yes. We've known each other since we were kids. Our families have always wanted us to. Then you don't love him. Well, what do you mean? It's obvious. If you did, you would be making excuses. Why, well, I think I resent that, Mr. Howard. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. If you did, you'd get up and walk right out of here. Leave me sitting. No, I'd never do that. Because, you see, I can't. My legs. I'm paralyzed. <clears throat> Back to your seat. I don't want you bothering the women passengers. You'd better come inside, ma'am. <laughs> oh, sweet tonic. It, it ain't safe out here. This is dangerous country. I have a bronchial condition. Sometimes it helps me. I see. You better come inside. Easier to jump over you than go around you. <laughs> Mr. Howard, I'm afraid even one of my daily waste courses wouldn't help her. Why, no. As a matter of fact, uh, I've been wanting to speak to you. I think you've already said enough. What's more, you didn't know what you were talking about. Oh, uh, about the girl. Well, if that's the case, I'm sorry, but you really can't expect me to believe that a gambling hall is a place to bring a, a young woman? Listen, Reverend, I'm going to tell you a story. It's about a girl that was practically born and raised in a gambling hall. My pop ran an honest place in Dodge City. He was killed a couple of years ago. I took it over. And I ran it just the way he did. That may be true. I kept the games on the level, and I kept out the drunks. It was a legitimate place. But I lost it. And you know why? I, uh, well, I'm afraid I don't. Just because I kept it on the level quite clear to me. I... I didn't pay off to the crooked politicians. I didn't run the kind of a place that they wanted. So first they hounded me. And then they broke me. And finally they burned me out. Excuse you, Miss Fay, for uh, 
introducing an innocent young girl into such uh, an environment. Look, Reverend, I've never had a kid of my own. But Marie is just as close to it as I ever need to get. She's going to sing and help me run the place. And I tell you, there isn't anything going to happen to her. Well, uh, that, Miss Faye, is a matter between uh, you and your conscience. It's so easy for you to judge somebody else. What better place is there for a girl on her own than an honest job in an honest place? There's one, the church. That's why I'm going to Tombstone, to make sure that there's a place for solace and refuge when one is needed. Uh, excuse me. The spirits be black this day. There's evil things brewing. Seem to be in order, Conductor. Good morning, Marshal. Good morning, Conductor. Who is it? Well, it's just about time. What do you mean, about time? I guess you know why we're aboard, don't you? Yes, but I didn't have any word from the company that you were going to be on the train. That's just the way we want it. You see, Uncle Sam wants to make sure this stuff gets through to Tombstone. We got word that someone might try to hold up the train, and that the gang might have planted a lookout among the passengers. So we decided to stay undercover and make him show his hand. I've checked all the passengers, all but this fellow Howard. Howard? Howard, wait, wait, wait a minute. That's all we need to know. Where are you going? Make sure this outlaw doesn't give you any trouble. Oh, and my condition is worse. Please, Abby. Not so early in the morning. Maybe a bit of food would help it. Well, we'll have it and try it. Oh. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. Howard. Good morning. I know you must be hungry, and we have so much. Wouldn't you please take something? Well, I am a little hungry, yes. Thanks. What's the idea? Just take it easy, big shot. You're not going to do any moving around from now on. I guess you all might as well know we're United States Marshals. This is Lynn Howard, wanted for murder and robbery. Ladies and gentlemen, I have to tell you why we were delayed in Albuquerque yesterday. We had received advance information that this train was going to be attacked. The spirits told me there was evil brewing. Well, we don't know for sure yet, but we think Howard here came aboard as a plant. That's why we had to put the cuffs on him. Don't give up too quick, darling. What do you mean? The spirits have never failed me yet. Don't go up too strong on the looks of things. I hope you're right, Abby. I hope so much you're right. Excuse me, Miss Dell. Oh, Dr. Willoughby. 
Well, why don't you sit down here? Bell won't mind. Well, thank you. I've been watching for an opportunity to sit with you ever since you came aboard. Why, Doctor? If there's anything I can do for you, don't hesitate to call on me. You're very kind. <laughs> down, folks, but there's nothing to worry about. Just a flock of sheep up ahead, and we have to wait till they cross the tracks. Sheep? Then get ready for trouble, never mind. Trouble? You've got any extra guns? Get them in here. Get these cuffs off of me quick. What are you talking about? This country's full of marauding Apaches. Indians! It's an old Indian trick. Stand feeding sheep or cow in front of a train, then attacking it. But, uh... Think of your passengers. Get up front, tell the engineer to keep trying to push through them. Now hurry up! <laughs> Doc, help Miss Clayton. Stay there, get these cuffs off of me. Come on, get these cuffs off of me. Give me a tight squeeze, Gulliver. Tight squeeze is not my business. You ever fight Indians before? No, but I try to squeeze a size 44 woman into a 21 corset. That's worse. Come on, give me the guns. Give the guns out. Smash the windows if you can't open them. All right,
did you make out? All right. Pull it, Scratch. Got pretty hot in here for a while. Well, you better go back in the coach and let the doc look it over. Any bandages? Yeah, I got some right here. Well, take them back with you when you go. I'm going up front and see how things are there. Quiet. a lot of blood, but he'll be all right. Can give you a hand? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Howard. You all right, Bill? Yeah. How about you, Gulliver? Oh, I got my quota. I got them all marked up out there. Now you're an Indian fighter. Thank you, sir. Some more bandages. Hey, Doc, can you take a look at my leg? I'll be with you in a minute. To think he did it for me. After all the things I said. Yeah, he turned out to be quite a man, didn't he, Bill? The best. You know something, Shorty? I'm going to help him build that church. We've been pretty lucky so far, haven't we? We sure have. Len, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Mm-hmm. Why did you act so strange when I mentioned Gary's name? Why did I? I didn't realize. You know something, don't you, and don't want me to know about it, is that right? Why, no. Really, I must have been thinking of something else. All right, Lynn. Here's some more ammunition. It might come in handy. Uh, what's the idea? Well, I hope I'm wrong, but we might as well be prepared in case there's another attack. I'll go stand by in the baggage car. That's a good idea. But first, I'll make sure that our friend here... You try to cuff me once more, and you won't have a stomach. You're resisting a federal officer. Am I? Give me the keys to this cuff. I said, give me the keys to this cuff. You've got a lot of nerve trying to handcuff Howard after he did more than anybody else to save the train. He's still an outlaw, and we've got to protect him. Protect the... what? The passengers he's already saved? I'm sure you can trust the man. All right. This train is my responsibility, and I'll take a chance on Howard. All right. But if anything happens, remember you were warned. Smelling salts. I never go any place without it. Quite clear what happened. Oh, nothing much. You just saved my life, that's all. I still don't know why. Perhaps I realized in the midst of all the trouble that maybe I've been too hasty in my judgment. After all, it's easy to condemn without knowing. You talked enough. You lie back and rest. I could have gone right into my father's clinic, but I wanted to do something on my own. That's why I decided to come west. I thought I might be of some real service. That was wonderful of you. Well, it seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Ever since I was a little boy, I thought about coming out here. New frontiers and so forth. May I come in? <coughs> Me tonic. Mm -hmm. It's me condition. Yes, I know, Miss Abby, but condition or no condition, it's just a little early in the morning, isn't it? What? I've been meaning to speak to you for some time, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, about what? 
You've been staring at me ever since we left Albuquerque. Why? Yes. Well, I, I tell you, Miss Abby, you're quite a challenge to me. Huh? You see, the way I figure, if dainty waist can fit you, then dainty waist can fit the world. In other words, you... Well, you have quite an unusual figure. Why, Mr. Gulliver. So, <laughs> one of these days, I'd like to try to match you with John L. Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Gulliver, mm -hmm. I'm willing to admit that maybe the spirits were deceived in you. Well, I gathered from the first that you always had a nose for the spirits. <laughs> but the cards are never wrong. No. I'm going to cut the cards for you. Well, cut the cards, call the game, tell me what's open is, and I'm your man, and to the victor may come the spoils. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> We're slowing down, hitting a long grade. Is anything the matter? Five mile grade. Sure. Excuse me. Pulling the chest up against him when I stopped him. The marshal? He's no marshal. He's a holdup plan. His partner tried to pull one of the Indians aboard, the one that killed him. You thought he was one of your gang dressed up as an Indian, didn't you? That's right. They had to pull the holdup before they reached the next grade. That's why I was getting the chest ready. Now, what's the signal? No signal. They come on before they hit the grade. Time up.
say anything else. I'd like to say a few words for the Danny Waste Corset Company. Yeah. I'd like to pass my cards out among you. I mean, this is almost the end of the trip. And I have several already. You have? Well, I tell your friends about it. Uh, you, it looks like you're going to need a corset now. And you're a good man. Thank a you. good man, Mr. Cullen. Thank you, Reverend. It's been a pleasure meeting you. How'd you know? As the spirits told Abby, Captain Leonard Byron, United States Army. They didn't kill her there. Then you came on this train undercover, Captain. That's right. We found out someone took the outlaws off to the gold shipment. Gary, that's how you knew about it. I'm sorry. Well, the shipment uh, must be pretty valuable, huh, Captain. It is. A quarter of a million dollars in gold. A quarter of a million? That's right. Money to build the railroad south from Tombstone. It has to be there to meet a deadline. Funny what a little time will do. I lose an assistant, the doc here gets himself a lifetime nurse. I end up helping to build a church. If you and the pastor don't take too long to build it, Belle, then as much as Doris came out here to marry somebody, maybe we can be the first two customers. Swell. Reverend, there's your first two dollars. I shall be proud to perform the ceremony. too soon for me. This is one of the slowest railroads I've ever been on. Well, if you don't like the service, why don't you get off and walk? I would, only I'm not expected till the train gets there. Uh, very funny. You're pretty funny yourself. In fact, I think you missed your calling. You really belong on the stage. Oh, you really think so? Yes, the first one out to California. Uh, I'll make it my berth while you're going. I'd like to give that fellow a piece of my mind if I thought I could spare it. No wonder. 